Simply showing up to the gym isn't enough to optimize muscle growth. What you actually do during your workouts, as well as before and after your training sessions, is at least equally as important and will determine whether you're making progress optimally or not making any progress at all. And so in this video, I'll be going over four tips that you can use to maximize the effect of your workouts and the amount of progress you're making in the gym. So let's start with tip number one, which is something a lot of people actually neglect, but is incredibly important, and that is getting enough quality sleep the night prior. Now, sleep isn't the most sexy topic, but it's actually the single most important tool for helping us improve our physical performance, and longer sleep durations are associated with increased athletic performance, as well as favorable effects on body composition. If on the other hand you're getting insufficient sleep and you wake up feeling tired and lethargic, then research shows that this will have a negative impact on your training performance, especially if you're doing high amounts of volume in your sessions. You'll also see an increase in your perceived exertion, which means that the same workout you would normally do will feel a lot harder and your ability to execute highly skilled tasks will also be impaired. So in other words, if you're doing more technical lifts in your sessions like squats and deadlifts, you won't be able to perform them as well as you normally would. Now, chronic sleep patterns likely matter a lot more than just getting one exceptionally good or bad night of sleep. And if you have one night of insufficient sleep, that's not going to completely destroy your next workout. But if you're doing high volume work in that session, then that likely is going to be negatively impacted to some degree. The amount of sleep you're going to need is going to be very individual, but the general recommendation for a healthy adult is to get at least seven or more hours of sleep every single night to make sure that you're functioning optimally. That being said, if you're an athlete, then there's also research out there that shows that you might require more like nine to 10 hours of sleep. And so if you're really serious about making the most progress possible, then there might be a benefit of extending the time that you spend in bed. I'd say ideally you want to be getting enough sleep so that you can wake up without the use of an alarm. So if you wake up naturally and you're feeling energetic, then that is a very good sign that you've gotten enough sleep to optimize your training performance. And if you had a bad night of sleep, then taking a nap before your workout is a good idea, as this has been shown to offset at least some of the negative effects, especially if it's at least 35 minutes long. That being said, I would be a little bit careful with this, as napping for too long or too late in the day can have a negative impact on the quality of your sleep the subsequent night. So I would only really rely on this if you absolutely have to. Tip number two is to have a pre-workout meal. This will A, provide enough energy for your training sessions to make sure that you don't fatigue and have this huge performance drop off mid-workout, and B, provide an anabolic environment for muscle growth. And research shows that having a meal before your training session is superior versus not eating anything at all, which in part is simply because this will leave you feeling less hungry during your workout. What exactly you should be eating before your training is going to depend on a number of factors like how long your session is going to be, how many sets you're going to do and how long you've been fasting before. So if you're only doing short training sessions with a low amount of volume, like for instance an Olympic lifter would, then it's probably not going to be that important what you actually eat before your workout as long as you don't feel hungry during the training session. However, if your goal is muscle growth, then chances are you're probably going to be training with moderate to high training volumes. And in that case, research has shown that the training sessions lasting longer than 45 minutes, where you're training with a high degree of effort, having some carbohydrate pre-workout is going to be beneficial for your performance. And on top of having some carbs before your training, it's also a good idea to have a protein serving with that meal, as this will make sure that you can start the repair process immediately following the workout. You just want to make sure that you're not having very large amounts of food too close to your workout, because that can cause gastrointestinal discomfort and prevent you from performing at your best because your body will be so busy digesting all that food that you just ate. So I find for myself and most of my clients that having the pre-workout meal about one to two hours before the training session is ideal at both providing enough energy and also making sure that I'm not feeling lethargic and bloated during the workout. I mostly just have a bowl of oatmeal with some honey and a scoop of whey protein. And if I'm eating it a bit further away from my workout, I'll add in a handful of almonds for some extra fat just to slow down the speed of digestion. If you're someone who works out first thing in the morning, then I would probably choose something a little bit lighter, like for instance, a whey protein shake and a banana, and instead focus on having more carbs in your last meal on the previous day. And then another thing that can help your gym performance, especially if you had a bad night of sleep and are feeling very tired, is to have about three to five milligrams of caffeine per kilogram of body weight from either coffee, an energy drink, or a pre-workout supplement about 30 to 90 minutes before your workout. The exact dose depends on how quickly you metabolize caffeine, and there are very large individual differences here. So I would just start with a very low dose and then potentially increase that from there. And like I said with naps, you want to avoid having caffeine too late in the day because it has a pretty long half-life of about six hours, and so it can impact your ability to fall asleep 
especially if you're someone who metabolizes caffeine very slowly. And if you've been enjoying this video so far, then be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. The next tip is to pay attention to your training quality. More specifically, this means executing each lift with proper technique to make sure that you're getting the most out of each exercise. So in other words, you want to perform each rep over a full range of motion, making sure that you're actually controlling the eccentric, so the lowering part of the lift, which are two things that you'll often see a lot of people mess up in the gym. And then you also want to pick exercises that you feel in the target muscles and don't give your joints any pain. So for example, if you're doing a bench press, but you feel like your shoulder is bothering you, but another chest exercise feels absolutely great, then just simply switch to that exercise. Like that's the beauty about going to the gym. Unless you're a power lifter or an Olympic weightlifter and you have to perform a specific movement, you can basically just choose whatever exercise feels best for you and your body type and which you enjoy the most. And then on each set, you want to make sure that you're pushing yourself hard because like I talked about in my last video, going close to failure is absolutely crucial if you want to build muscle. So on average, I would say you want to be keeping no more than one to two repetitions in reserve on each set so that the last repetition of each set is a lot slower than the previous reps. You probably also don't want to do too many sets for a single muscle group within one training session, as there seems to be diminishing returns with how much muscle you're able to build from one workout. How much is too much is going to be pretty individual and probably also has to do with what muscle group is being trained. But I would say most people will probably benefit of capping their session volumes at about 10 sets for a single muscle group and then doing the remaining sets on another day. So if, for example, you're doing 12 sets for your chest during the week, then you'd probably be better off splitting that up into two sessions and doing six sets on Monday and another six sets on Thursday instead of having to do all 12 sets in one workout. Tip number four is to have a post-workout meal. Now, with the post-workout meal, you're looking to refuel your body to aid in recovery and help facilitate muscle repair and remodeling. Now, in the past, everyone used to talk about that anabolic window where your muscles were more sensitive to protein intake immediately post-exercise, which is why the general recommendation was to have a protein shake immediately following your workout. Now, this has since become a bit of a myth, and in a 2017 paper on this topic, the authors concluded that the total amount of protein that you're eating in a day is by far the most important factor for muscle growth. However, there probably is still a small benefit of having some protein fairly soon after your workout. So ideally, you do want to have a protein feeding within three to four hours after your pre-workout meal, especially if you didn't have a large pre-workout meal. So next we need to talk about if you should be eating carbohydrates after your workout. Now, there are two main arguments for this. There is number one, that you want to replenish your glycogen that you've just depleted during the workout. And number two, you want to spike insulin post-workout to improve anabolism and muscle growth. So in terms of replenishing your glycogen, most resistance training workouts don't really deplete your glycogen nearly as much as say, for instance, an endurance sport. And as long as you're having some carbohydrates in your diet, you will get full glycogen replenishment within a 24 hour period anyway. And because most people don't train the same muscle group on consecutive days, especially not with a high amount of volume, you don't really have to worry about that too much. And regarding the theory of insulin spiking, it's important to know that protein spikes insulin just as much as carbohydrate if you consume it in the appropriate amount. And so if you're only doing resistance training, then I would mainly focus on getting enough protein in your post-workout meal and you don't necessarily have to have carbohydrates in there as well. That being said, I generally still like to have them in my post-workout meal, and depending on what time I work out, I'll normally have some kind of lean protein like chicken breast, with some kind of carbohydrate like rice and some vegetables, within one to two hours after my workout. Okay, so we've talked about how to get the most out of your training sessions, but now you also want to make sure that you're actually measuring if you're making progress or not. So if you want to learn more about that, just click this video right here, where I explain a few methods that you can use to measure if you're actually improving your body composition and building muscle mass. So thank you so much for watching everyone and I'll see you in the next video.